Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the DanJohnUniversity.com podcast. I'm Dan John. This is episode 114, and welcome back. Got some big news uh, for our members on the site, DanJohnUniversity.com. We have a new course. Um, as I'm speaking, I don't know the number of chapters exactly. I think it's around 10, but it's easy strength for fat loss. Yes, I've done a PowerPoint presentation on YouTube about it, and yeah, I've talked about it a lot, but this is kind of a more organized uh, presentation. For those of you who've taken the courses on easy strength and the advanced methods of easy strength, uh, you're going to know the basics, the foundations. Uh, it's a general course, pretty simple. I'll, I'll give you everything, okay? Get a good night's sleep, wake up, drink coffee until you're wet, ready to work out, then work out real short, and then go for a walk. And then after that, be sure to eat veggies, fermented foods, fiber, fruit, protein, drink water. Do that a couple of times and then uh, just repeat that. Uh, I'm certainly no fat loss expert. That's not, not where my world has been. Basically, I'm a performance coach, um, uh, collision sports, collision occupations, uh, track and field. But the interesting thing is, when I started doing some of this stuff, and it's been inspired by a lot of the people I trust, and I, I name names in this thing, uh, as I began to do it, uh, when I made the real commitment to doing it on January 1st of this year, I weighed 251, and now I'm down to 218, and I'm going to begin uh, another uh, uh, hard couple of weeks, hardish, uh, trying to get down to 211 as an Olympic lifter, which is 96 kilos. But if, you know, if I go from 251, 251 pounds to 211 fairly easily without, I don't, I can't tell you one particular day that was even hard compared to what I normally do. Uh, I do think it's the combination of things uh, that works. But to go from 251 to 211, honestly, I, I hate to say effortlessly because now I sound like an infomercial. And I already gave you the whole thing. Sleep. Sleep good, sleep well. Uh, I use a supplement called Hibernate, which is a, there, there'll be a link uh, on this uh, on this course that you can get a discount. I don't take the discount because I don't want you to think I have any, any, uh, I, I don't get anything in, in for my, for telling you how good it is. Um, sleep well, wake up, drink coffee. I drink Folgers. I get nothing from Folgers. Um, the best part of waking up, okay, I'll stop right there, uh, sleep, <laughs> wake up, drink your coffee, uh, get your work done, uh, have a tight little easy strength workout, go for a walk, uh, eat appropriately. I will include a lot of fermented food, uh, probably more than you do. Uh, I eat a lot of kimchi every day and that's it folks. Uh, but it works because it's like it's brick after brick after brick after brick and pretty soon I'm down 40 pounds of bricks. So I hope you like it. It's free to our members only. Um, somebody always asks when I say free to our members only, they say, well, how can I get it? Well, it's free to our members. Well, damn, yeah, that's good. But how do I get it? Well, it's free. just sign up for the site. And I hope you do. Uh, the reason I like the site so much, it's not just the free courses. We got a bunch in there. Um, the download section alone, I, I think pays for itself. Uh, the, the tons of essays, the forum, some of the nicest people I've ever met uh, are on the forum and I really respect the work they do. But then there's the workout generator, which I just can't believe what a marvelous thing Brian's put together. You plug in your equipment, you plug in what you want to do and it spits out a almost perfect workout for you. And if it's not perfect, you easily can adjust some things up and down and make it even better. So yeah, I know I'm selling, uh, the site today and I'm selling the workout generator and I'm selling the new course, but I really think it's good stuff. And I, and I, and I'm, I'm hoping you look into it. Let's start some questions. We got a question from Rick and I think this has a funny opening line. I'm 65 and have not been able to do a pull up since Gerald Ford was president. I have a BMI of 28, um, you know, reasonable number. Um, not terrible, not, I mean, whatever BMI means this week. I've just finished one cycle of your hanging uh, program, progressing from one long uh, hang three times a week 
to four flexed arm hangs three times a week. I'm making progress. Well, Rick, progress at 65 is good. Yeah. But I am working to get that first pull up from the dead hang. My plan is to keep with the low and flex hangs. And I may add in the ab wheel I've heard you mention. Yeah. So when I teach the RKC2, uh, one of the things we really spend some time on is that conversation of the ab wheel. Um, the ab wheel is a good a, a good training device for the pull-up. Um, and I need to lose some weight. Do you have any other suggestions? Well, if you're doing the hangs, you're doing the ab wheel, and you're losing weight, I think you're... You're getting yourself into a really good spot. One exercise I think you might want to add, and it'll help you maybe in the weight loss-ish, but uh, so hang and then bring your knees to your chest, the hanging knees to your chest. Uh, now, the leg raise would be more straight legs, but I want them bent and bring them to your chest. When you bring them into your chest, you're going to get in this position here where you push yourself into the hollow rock, and I think that'll be good. If you do the maybe the ab wheel once, twice, three times a week and do the hanging bent knee leg raise uh, once, twice, three times a week. I think that'd be a good compliment. What's good about the hang, uh, the, the leg raise, is it's also going to work on that grip strength, which is going to help your pull up. I would stick with the hangs for a bit. Uh, and then what I would do is I would just sprinkle in uh, some negative pull-ups. So what I want to do is at the end of the flex, uh, all I want you to do is, you know, pull your chin away. And then as soon as your head clears the bar, you know, drive it in again. Try to get your ab wall engaged as you come down on the negative. Negative pull-ups seem to help a lot of people. One little thing, a little asterisk here for you, Rick, is that being 65, I'd rather you err on taking your time getting there just to avoid those elbow problems that so many of us get. And I think I have another question coming right up about it. So... Uh, pay attention, Rick, to this one and our next question from Oli, okay? Speaking of Oli, we have a question. What do you think is the reason for middle-aged pull-up syndrome uh, maps, middle-aged pull-up syndrome? What's the reason? I've been told by uh, a physical therapists that it's really about the same thing as tennis elbow. Uh, I, I think it has to do with I don't think we get it from doing pull-ups. I think we get it from missing pull-ups. So when we get in that position, they go, uh, and uh, this this takes the brunt of it. Okay, I think that's, yeah. I th let's see, where do I get it? Yeah, right there. That's where I get it, right there, okay? Um, is it just, uh, is it maybe just people get heavier, fatter as they age? Well, Oli, that's a nice thing to say. So as people get fat, their elbows go out. Uh, you 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 probably make a lot of friends with a statement like that at parties. Um, it certainly could be. I also think that certain exercises bring out uh, certain issues. Um, you know, if you decide to play some of our American sports like baseball, the throwing sports, yeah, you're gonna no matter how excellent your form is, something's gonna come up and you're gonna have some shoulder issues. Uh, is it? It's just the nature, I think, of doing the pull-ups. Recently, I found some exercise videos from the 1950s with much rhythmic mob mobility exercises where the instructor is counting along with the movement, one, two, three, and so on. I found this type of work very refreshing, and it reminded me of original strength. Do you know what I am talking about? Yeah, I do. I think you might be talking about maybe the Jack Elaine videos, which I grew up watching Jack Elaine. Uh... There are a couple episodes that I think I watched that are on YouTube that I think I might have watched live or, or you know, whatever it was recorded, and I thought it was live. Um, the Jack Lane method, the uh, Canadian Air Force method, the uh, that, that exercise program that the, the late Prince Philip did every day for 10 minutes. It was a British program with no weights and yeah, I'm a, I, I, I did that first, like many people did. That, those, we called those calisthenics when I was growing up. Um, and you would, uh, you would progress by doing more reps, which obviously works. But, you know, in, in the world of uh, progression, I've always thought there's better tools than just doing more reps. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And uh, elaborate on it. I think it works. I think it's got its value. I think if you you have that kind of mentality that you can do it or you're set up to do it, yeah, go for it. 
uh, it's not for me. Uh, I like I it would drive it drives me crazy. And I did a lot of those programs as a kid, but I just think maybe I'm. Honestly, I think my ability to stay focused has diminished uh, with all my years in the fitness industry. <laughs> I I don't have the uh, I don't have the courage I used to to stick with a program for two, three, four, or five years and just keep adding repetitions. Uh, where I'm at in my life right now, I find that boring. So I hope that helps. I, it, anytime I get to talk about Jacqueline uh, Ole, it's it's a good day. We have a question from Ryan, and Ryan says. Recently, I have been uh, getting back into barbell training after using exclusively kettlebells for quite some time. For the past few weeks, I've done the following uh, this schedule. On Monday, deadlifts and press, which is a great workout by itself. Tuesday, barbell complexes or your beginner's program for Olympic lifting. Uh, I think that's Dave Turner's uh, program, and that's a good one. I, 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 and that's a hard one. Uh, Wednesday, squat and bench press. Thursday, complexes or that beginner program, and weekends are mobility and uh, kettlebell work. Tuesdays and Thursdays, barbell work is done uh, at lighter weight as I'm new to the Olympic lifts. Yeah, and I'm trying to be a stickler about correct form, and I don't want to do get too beat up uh, doing these. He only has an, uh, access to barbells Monday through Thursday. Wow, so Monday through Thursday, you're doing uh, a two-day-a-week kind of strength program, uh, which is kind of cool. It looks like uh, almost looks like Wendler's five three one, and two days a week you're doing the Olympic lifts. Um, maybe those other three days should be off. I like. I, I actually do like this. I have combined all of this with walking, and so far I've been feeling pretty good. My question: Am, am I spinning my wheels chasing too many things at once here, trying to increase strength as well as learning the Olympic lifts? The Tuesday Thursday lifts are light now, but once the weight begins to go up, am I going to wind up running myself into the ground? Um, honestly, I I think you have some wisdom to this. I, uh, years ago, when I worked with a busy person, we 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 put together this idea of the Saturday and Sunday. I mean, real long sessions. I mean, there was a. I mean, it was. <laughs> um, it was the Olympic lifts on Saturday plus uh, a whole bunch of Highland game stuff. And then uh, uh, the power variations of the Olympic lifts on Sunday with back squats. So power clean, power snatch, push jerk and back squat, plus uh, other drills. And then on Wednesday, he did, uh, I think it was power cleans or front squats, depending on the week. And then uh, he would take one of the Highland game uh implements and practice with it uh and it was always the heavy one so the braemar the heavyweight for distance the heavy hammer I don't, I don't think he had a caber to work with and uh we just uh uh and and the idea was the two really hard sessions a day a week a day a week and then that one you know more practice session and then the other four days were rest uh, what you're doing here is you're you're cramming together four hard workouts the only thing I would say, uh, I, I think you can do this pretty easily, but on those that mobility work uh, and those uh, those walking on the weekend, make sure it's true mobility work. Make sure it's very restorative, very easy for you. Make sure you're not, you know, lighting candles under every candle you have. Okay, I, I think it's, I th I think it's doable. I, I know this. You're doing deadlift and press, and then the other day is squat and bench press. That's not going to beat you up too much. And the beginner's program for Olympic lifting is not going to beat you up too much. Um, honestly, here would be the only little asterisk I would tell you. If you're doing the one I'm thinking of, if you're doing Dave's program, let's not do the... For sure, we don't need the overhead press work on your Tuesday and Thursday beginner's program. And uh, the front squat, cut that down to maybe three sets of two as just practice the movement. One, two, one, two. One, two. That might uh, uh, do it, but I, I like what you're doing here. Anytime you combine the power lifts with the Olympic lifts and doing add some kettlebell mobility and walking, I, you had me at hello. I mean, I love this stuff. So, yeah, Ryan, I, I think it's good. And uh, I kind of want to know how this goes for you, okay? Because this, I like it. It's it's a little different. It's some serious lifting. Uh 
And then those three kind of off easy days might really, this might work out really well. Let me know how it goes. Thank you. So we have a question from Eugene, another 65 year old. As a 65 year old, Eugene says, who spent 35 years in the bar scene, uh, uh, aero bars doing triathlons. My shoulders have gotten used to being aero bars. So these triathlon bars, you read like that. Okay. My shoulders got uh, hunched and rolled inward to remain as aerodynamic as possible. This is great for time trialing on a bicycle, but it absolutely sucks for the overhead squat. Uh, yeah, okay. About the only thing I can hand, uh, hold over my head is a piece of PVC pipe when I do the overhead squat because I can hold that weight up and it invariably drifts well forward, um, not of my ears, but of my face. I can only barely get my biceps behind my eyeballs when down in the ass to grass position. I can hang from a pull-up bar without discomfort, which is a good sign. Um, and it doesn't hurt to push my arms back in the proper position. It just takes a heavy vehicle and a winch to make it happen. I really want to do overhead squats and a squat snatch, but right now it's not possible. What do I do to improve this horrific shortfall? Well, Eugene, you know, honestly, at 65, I'm glad you're worried about your shoulder health because that's just going to get worse. Um, you know, you're, as we age, you know, certain muscles stiffen. And uh, my concern with anybody who has spent a lot of time in this position. Now, there are idiots uh, online who disagree with this, but I've just, I'm not going to argue with what I've seen, what I've experienced, and what smart people have told me. But I do worry about spending too much time in this hunched over position. I worry about it because, you know, as you age, you want to look good, you want to feel good. I think it's perfectly uh, fine to stand tall, look tall as you move around. Um, I would like you to, to find uh, somebody like a, like a physical therapist or a physio, depending on where you live, someone who can kind of sit you down and maybe give you a set of exercises. Um, you know, my physical therapist, Mike, he gave me a really simple one where I just go like that. And it was unusual for me not to hear my uh, shoulder pop right there. And uh, it's a real simple exercise where all I do is a, a touchdown like that. And it really made my shoulder feel good. Um, I do a number of stretches every day. I hang, as you know, and I do some other stuff. But um, you, you're on the other side of things. Uh, I'm, I'm doing these movements to maintain my overhead squat. And you're trying to get there. So you might need a little bit more advanced care. Uh, I, I don't want to leave you in the dark because I think you're already doing the smart stuff. Okay, you're hanging, um, which I think is a great idea. And then you're also, um, you know, practicing the overhead squat, which I think is a good idea. And the third one, you're aware, uh, which <laughs> I'm going to give you high. I'm going to give you high marks for simply being aware that there's an issue. And uh, I think sometimes that uh, uh, people don't know that. Uh, Thank you, Eugene. Good question. We have a question from Bill, and it's interesting because today it seems like it's the pull-up week. Uh, we have another question on pull-ups here. Bill asks us, does hand position make very much difference when doing pull-ups? Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to give an answer yes right now. If you're being tested on a certain kind of pull-up, then hand position matters because you have to do it the way they say. So if they say a thumbless grip for a pull-up, and that's the thing you're being tested on for a workshop or certification or military thing or police academy test, um, then you have to do it that way. If they say this way, do it this way. If they tell you to do it this way, then it does. Other than being tested, I think it's actually not a good idea to just do them one way. And part two of your question, Bill, I find underhand, that is chin-ups, uh, sometimes tweaks my arms or shoulders a bit. Okay, and you are now the first person I've ever heard of that uh, bothering you. That's that's fascinating. That's why I love working with so many different kinds of clients. Uh, for me, I find that just, oh, I feel so good. Okay, but maybe I've been doing overhand pull-ups for so long, I'm just not used to it. Obviously, yeah, obviously. Should I deliberately rotate through the four options? Uh, underhand, parallel, angled. Oh, ang uh, angled, okay, I know what you're talking about. Uh, and oh, oh, overhand. I've always been a big fan of the parallel pull-up. That's why I like having monkey bars uh, <clears throat> near my facilities when I train. Uh, at the school I was at where they moved the javelin sector to be near the monkey bars. 
I mean, it was just a win-win, the, the brachiating of the monkey bars and then the parallel grip pull-ups. And it was interesting to watch the athletes naturally change their body position to come through more like this at the top. I thought that was fascinating. Um, to keep my sh arms and shoulders stretched out are just the ones that are comfortable. Uh, you know what I would do if I were you? Uh, f uh, and let me double check this. Uh, we don't have an age here, Bill, but hey, man, if you, no one's forcing you to do pull-ups. Do whatever you think. Make, do whatever feels good. Uh, it'll be interesting to see you do, like, if you did a whole bunch of parallel and then test on the one you have to test on, see if that carried over. Uh, and finally, he says this, while we're here, what about my thumbs? I think your thumbs should be connected right there to your hand. <laughs> uh, tucked, wrapped, or whatever my heart feels like that day. Um, <clears throat> we teach at the uh, certs to do the thumbless grip because it, I guess it prepares you for the muscle up. But honestly, <clears throat> I uh, when I'm working with the military and police now, I always tell them uh, that they should have a chain link fence in their facility and, and practice jumping over chain link fences because that's much more common for them than a nice little hanging sewer pipe or, I don't know, pipe. Um, I also think that they should train, uh, you know, like on a fire escape kind of thing, that kind of, you know, that kind of muscle up. Um, I also think they should have a variety of smaller uh, fences so they can actually practice uh, leaping over fences because I think that's a lot more applicable to what they need to do. Um, so I don't really care about the thumbs as much as I used to. Uh, I don't know if they make you stronger or weaker. Um, I, 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 I wouldn't, I've never, I would never be able to do a chin up without my thumbs like that. Um, but a pull up I can do it easily. Uh, with the parallels, I don't, I don't even know if it would matter for me, but I tend to use my thumbs, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure it matters unless, and getting back to our original question, if it's for a test. Well, uh, I hope if you're listening to this podcast this week, you listen to all the questions because all the questions were related to the pull-up this week, uh, which is in a way, which is kind of interesting. Um, this was unplanned. We, we just answer the questions as they come in. But it's nice. It's nice to hear people worried about the pull-up. Um, the pull-up is a great exercise uh, in all of its <laughs> varieties. Uh, it can be overdone, like everything. But at the same time, I, I think a lot of people, uh, a lot of people can use it. There's great there's great uh, life use of the pull-up, you know, climbing trees and things. But also, too, it's just a nice measurement. When I go back to some of my, my older books back in the 1930s, the pull-up was how you got strong. It wasn't the push-up. It was the pull-up. And it was uh, expected that you do some every single day. And that's okay, so one of the exercises that Kenny Carpenter, the 1936 Olympic champion, felt, really help, felt that really helped him throw so far. And he threw far, considering... He was thrown on in spikes on a dirt ring and also had played American football that fall. So it was a pretty impressive guy. So uh, there you go. Once again, don't forget that the, uh, the new uh, Easy Strength for Fat Loss course is on the site. Uh, it's free for all members. Um, if you have questions, remember, email them to us at podcast at danjohnuniversity.com and I'll do my best to answer each and every one and occasionally we'll have a week like this where we're all basically focused around the same topic and I enjoyed that. Until next time, I'm Dan John and thank you so much.